What's up, guys? Back with another episode of Rich Talk. I am going to make it short and sweet. I'm going to be doing a kind of live Apple event review. So basically, right now, they're starting to do an introduction of the new Apple Watch. I'm not quite... I'm not uh, quite uh, versed in uh, Apple to the most extent, but I will give you a breakdown of what's happening. Apparently, they're basically adding in a, a digital SIM card into their Apple Watch, so it might be able to be used as a phone uh, singularly, which will be interesting. I'm going to go rogue for a minute. I, you know, you guys, you guys get it, but sometimes people take technology for granted. And just, just for perspective, I'm Mike. In fact, I'm actually double mic in just the right location so you can hear me. Deidre's out in the middle of a windy lake, and the only microphone on Deidre is the little tiny one on the Apple Watch. It's a foot or two away from her mouth. She's paddling, and the signal's being sent over cellular coming in, and that's just darn close to magic. Who would have thought? Nice. Series 3 comes in a wide variety of cases and bands. We have a beautiful new gold aluminum finish along with silver and space gray. We're excited to introduce a new band we call the Sport Loop. It's designed for an active lifestyle and it's light, stretchy, and breathable. For Apple Watch Nike Plus, we have a of new colors. And they're releasing a new version of their Nike Plus Run Club app with great new features like M1 audio coaching. And we have some wonderful colors across all of our bands that you just have to see. All right, so they're introducing some new bands for their new iPhone. I mean, iWatch, Apple Watch, whatever. iWatch, you know how I feel about that. Watch face styles, some beautiful new bands, like the one on the left that's inspired by the classic. The bands do look nice, though. And last year, we introduced a white ceramic watch. This year, we're adding a ceramic watch in a gorgeous gray finish. Finally, a gray. So it looks like an actual watch instead of something expensive enough for people to want to steal it off your hands. Watches were built with a great deal of care as well as concern for the environment, and they're free of these harmful materials. So that's Apple Watch Series 3, cellular, GPS, swim proof, 70% faster dual core processor, uh, barometric altimeter, all the features of Watch OS 4. And it still has all-day battery life up to 18 hours across a mix of LTE, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. We have two versions of Series 3. There's one with cellular at $399 and a version without cellular that has all the other great features at just $329. And we're going to keep Series I think that's uh, quite awesome. I've been looking for a TV watch thing. I've been looking for a, a watch that has a the cellular built in that's actually good because a lot of the mostly Chinese brands aren't e- exactly a great quality because not all the time I want to be a, a, using my phone or maybe I just want to carry the Apple Watch alone. So that's nice. And since this is a platform that I know is very, um, how do you say, very advanced compared to the other ones i know that it should be very good plus with the sim you it can work with a lot of different brands i mean a lot of different carriers such as at and which is kind of the one that they work with all the time okay so they're going to be available on september 22nd so that's interesting so if you're interested in the apple watch obviously if you're watching this event right now you're interested but if you're interested in it, then check it out because it seems to be pretty interesting. It's definitely better than the original one. Very cool things you can do with the cellular function in Series 3. And one of those is to stream 40 million songs right on your web. We've made a great ad showing just that. I'd love to play it for you. All right, so they're showing us another ad showing another feature of the Apple Watch. And how it can stream a lot of songs on that stupid dingle dangle dongle type headphone jack nonsense from. Come bring the snow. Come bring the 
All right, so there's this uh, hipster skateboarding all over the place, which would totally get the police to, to get called on him. But, you know, it's Apple, so it's okay. So now they're advertising 40 million songs on your wrist with Apple Music. And of course, the entire people who are there are cheering because, you know, Apple fanboys. It looks like a... Uh, big moment for Apple Watch and we think you are going to love it. Next up, I'd like to turn your attention to Apple TV. Apple TV coming up now. Apple TV has changed the way we experience television, simplifying the way that we discover and enjoy movies, TV shows, sports, news, games, apps. And That's true. Shows. If you have Apple TV, most of us are using Google or Android products. So, our second yeah. For Apple TV. Apparently, they got an Emmy for Apple TV, which is interesting. This Emmy was in recognition for how Siri makes it so easy to search, discover, and interact with your TV content. Apparently, they were praising it for app the the, the Siri and how easy it is uh, to find new content that's integrated into Apple TV. They always say that they change the way they see something, but it's not that they change it. All they did was improve it. Improving it is what they should say. We've improved the way instead of changing it. Because not everything they do is revolutionary. It just happens to be better implemented. True to life experience, a more immersive experience. Now, we're at the next major inflection point. One that has the most stunning visuals ever. All right, I guess they're going to add HDR or something. TV screens that are coming into our living rooms. This will bring cinematic quality to virtually everything that you watch. That's why I am so excited to introduce Apple TV 4K. Oh, wow. Apple TV 4K. That's what they call it, revolutionary. At the heart Roku. Of TV 4K are two key technologies that are... Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, TV. Google the Home, all uh, regular TVs that are 4K have all been streaming 4K ready. What will Apple's 4K do for anybody else? Nothing. Thank you, Tim. It is really great to be here tonight. Um, Apple TV 4K is incredible. And it starts with two big advancements in picture. Two big advancements. First is 4K. Wow, so amazing. I've had 4K for two years now. This is an image in 4K. It's got incredible detail. Yes, we That's understand. Because 4K has four times the number of pixels. As okay, we understand. Resolution this makes no sense. Why are they explaining all this stuff? They're acting like 4K is some new technology they just figured out. Or HDR. Wow, and they're introducing HDR, high dynamic range. HDR is Pretty much any TV that's 4K right now for $200 more will have HDR. LG, Samsung, Sharp, all those TVs have HDR built in. Look at the color, the details. Wow, yes, the color and detail. All things I already see, I have a 4K TV myself. As well as Dolby Vision, the best HDR experience. Now, Apple TV 4K with HDR delivers the highest picture quality ever. And to show you, we've installed a state-of-the-art Dolby 4K HDR cinema projector in the theater. So let's dim the lights and let me show you the new Apple TV. Now we've remastered our screensavers. Our customers love these to take full advantage of 4K HDR. Yep. So now their their wallpaper is HDR. That's great. And even at night, you can see incredible details in the buildings and the cars on the road. Yeah, obviously that's how HDR works. Now here's a city shot that really shows off the crispness. It's like all these Apple people have never seen HDR in their life. Why are they so happy to see that? I want to see HDR on the phone. That would be amazing. To have Apple TV on a streaming device, Sony has already come up with a 4K streaming device. 
uh, but let's take a look at a 4K. Google Home 4K or Chromecast 4K. All those have it. My TV has streaming 4K. And most of us are watching Netflix anyways. Netflix, Voodoo, Crackle, those kind of things. Crack, Crackle, Crackle. Now they're showing a part of uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. What's up, guys? Did you get your pin number? Whoa, here are the Avengers. What are you guys doing here? Four of the Hulk. Good to finally meet you guys. Why are you being more handsome in person? Iron Man. Hey, what are you doing locking the bed? You're a billionaire. Hey. Nobody's happy about that. Great, and that was all playing on the new Apple TV 4K. Awesome. If they give us more bandwidth than Netflix, that'll be interesting. Oh wow. Yep, the A10X processor, which is a processor that none of us know about, it's now in their i their their Apple Apple TV. Two times the 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 GP, CPU performance and four times the the GPU performance, and of course, TVOS. Yeah, maybe some great audio too. Do they already support all the the formats? DTS Master Audio. So now you'll have and the Dolby. biggest releases in the best picture quality, all on iTunes, all available for Atmos the and Arrow 3D. And They're offering 4K moves at the same as HDR. That's Netflix. That's not really a big deal. Automatically upgrade them to 4K HDR, no additional charge. Yep, so all of them are going to be updated to 4K HDR, no additional charge. Now, in addition to iTunes, we've been working with leading streaming providers like Netflix to bring their 4K HDR titles to Apple TV. Might I add, we've already had that for about two years now since they implemented HDR. And I've been streaming Amazon Amazon TV and everything is working quite well too. TV shows in a single place. It's been available in the U.S., and today, I'm happy to announce that we're bringing it to seven additional countries. Seven other countries are getting this. Later this month, and the rest by the end of the year. Now, for each country, it's really important that we have the content that those customers know and love. And that's why we're adding all of these local services to Apple TV. Now, later this year, Apple TV will do even more because we're bringing live sports so you'll never miss a game. If you're a huge sports fan like I am, you're really gonna love this feature. If your favorite team is playing on ESPN, it will automatically appear right first in the up next list. You'll even get notifications when a game's about to start or if there's a close game so you can start watching instantly. And if you scroll up, you'll see even more games. And in addition, we're bringing live news to the TV app. Now let's take a look at those games. As you can see, we should I'm saying live news is actually a pretty good idea. I that's the one thing I've been missing since uh, doing the cable cutter movement, which is uh, something I'm going to bring up on, on another episode of Rich Talk. Where I'm doing a review, a uh, long-term review for Netflix, which is kind of funny because I haven't seen a lot of those, even though Netflix is like super popular. So I'm going to do one of those. And compare YouTube TV, which I tried out for 30 days, and compare it to some other streaming uh, sites like uh, DirecTV Now and things like that. There's no better choice than Apple TV. No better choice than Apple TV. I agree wholeheartedly because that's exactly what we wanted two years ago when we've had the same stuff already for so long. Including the music that your friends are listening to. And because Apple TV is always home, you get anywhere, anytime access to all of your home kit accessories. 
Oh yeah, they have Apple HomeKit, which is pretty useful, but honestly, most of us are using Alexa or Google Home to do this stuff already. There's so much more that Apple TV can do. And to see what's possible, we'd love to show you a new game from that game company. They're known for making artistic and critically acclaimed games. As a matter of fact, their first game called Flower was chosen as the first video game ever to be in the permanent collection of the Smithsonian. It's very, very cool. So with that, I would love to welcome their CEO, Genova Chen. Thanks, Eddie. At that game company, uh, we treat games as an art form. Today, many of us play games alone. But we believe games is a medium that can bring people together. Yep, and they ju we just realized that now. We never thought that people could play together. I hope you guys hear my sarcasm. Sky is a romantic social adventure game where you fly above the clouds to explore the wonders. Is this in 4K HDR? Because that would be the only reason why I'd play this game. It's designed to be adaptable to the most casual players. The control is simple and intuitive. Everything can be done with one finger on the Siri remote. Oh, hey, that's uh, Mike's friend Jeff, and he's asking us to follow him. Let's see what he has discovered. Compassion and generosity are key to unveil hidden areas of the world, as well as growing your character. So by lighting all the candles, Jeff and Mike was able to summon the spirit. And he's about to teach Mike the knowledge of how to summon a magical creature. In Sky, we really take advantage of the powerful new hardware. With Metal 2 and Apple TV's 810X Fusion chip, we're able to run the game smoothly even with these detailed clouds, intelligent creatures, and up to eight yeah, this reminds you of a, a, a better version of No Man's Sky, if you know what I'm talking and, about. Because uh, at least you can meet somebody in the game rather than never, barely ever being able to meet anyone ever. We don't have time to show you everything. So Please don't. Forward to the dark temple ahead. We just want to get to the iPhone 8, come on. Important themes of the game. In Sky, you play as the children of light. And your goal is to bring that light to where it is needed the most. With the light, Mike was able to free all the butterflies, and together they can move on to the next part of the adventure. With a live orchestral soundtrack and cinematic experiences, you can expect to be immersed in an ever-expanding world. So join hands with your loved ones and play Sky exclusively on Apple TV, iPad, and iPhone this winter. Thank you. Thanks, Geneva. Yeah, but definitely looks like a game that I would go and go and buy an Apple TV just to play. Definitely. Definitely not. Stunning 4K HDR video. Live sports along with live news. That is awesome. Only thing, live news and live sports, which is basically TV. The perfect big screen companion for your iPhone or iPad. New Apple TV 4K starts at $179. It joins the existing one. You can order it starting on September 15th, and it ships just a week later. That is the new Apple TV 4K. Thank you, and I'd like to turn it back to Tim. Yes, okay. Honestly, they're, they're just implementing technology that we've already seen already, but at least they're bringing it into their own ecosystem, which is now going to be better than it was before, because they've been kind of behind on technology for quite some time. Next stop iPhone. Finally, the iPhone is up. That's literally all I came on for. That's why I didn't start it uh, at the same time that it actually started. Can improve people's lives and change the world. 
No other device in our lifetimes has had the impact on the world that the iPhone has. I have to say that is true. Has become so essential or put so much power in the system. The first iPhones were very revolutionary, but once we got to around the four, everything started to get too cookie cutter. They weren't doing anything really in terms of innovation. They, Samsung started taking them over, then LG came on to catch up. Moto was working really well. So much different brands, and now the Chinese brands are even catching up. The Xiao Xiaomi, um. Duji. In the last 10 years, we've reimagined or invented numerous technologies to create just that experience. The first iPhone forever changed how we interact with technology by introducing multi-touch. The first time, you were actually touching the software instead of buttons. It's magical. The App Store changed the way we work, play, learn, communicate. Spawning new companies and even though there was another app store, but I guess it wasn't as good. We took the viewing experience. There was more app stores before, but most of them weren't that advanced until things like Google Google Apps came out and then um Apple Store or Apple App Store. And with Siri we used artificial intelligence to make our voices more powerful. iPhone even revolutionized security and privacy. For now. With Touch ID and our wallet. Until they take it out in this phone generation, as far as I heard rumors of. iPhone put amazing, easy to use cameras into our hands, becoming the most popular way to capture the images of our lives. Which makes sense because not everybody is going to go out and buy a professional camera. They're not professionals. I'm not going to use my iPhone to take professional photos, but I definitely could use it for um, snapshots and things. When now, we can create devices that are far more intelligent, far more capable, far more personal than ever before. We have huge iPhone news for you today. And it gets started right now. All right, let's hear it. Unless they're going to give us another slideshow. Yep, another slideshow. Ooh, it looks the same now. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're showing us the 8 right now, but it's a glass back. It might be the iPhone X. But yes, glass back, which is a typical Samsung thing. Yep, it says 8. So, glass back, we haven't seen the screen yet. Honestly, it looks like the last generation of Samsung Galaxies. Or previous versions of this phone, which had a glass back. Kind of like the, the 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 third generation iPhone, which had a shiny back almost. So excited to tell you all about the new iPhone 8 and the new iPhone 8 Plus. Okay, iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus. The improve on everything we love about iPhone. The design is all new. There's glass in both the front and the back. Yep, but it's not seamless like the Samsungs. The finish of each iPhone 8 comes in silver. Space gray. Definitely not. Beautiful. What I liked about the Samsungs is that uh, in the new S8, the, the glass seamlessly just flows over the, onto the back. It's almost like it's made of all glass. But with this, I can see the bevel between the glass and the, the, the aluminum chassis. So apparently it's stronger, and they said glass design reinforced by steel. But let's see if it actually doesn't break so like every other phone. Glass is the most durable ever in a smartphone. Okay, so they have the most durable glass in any smartphone apparently. And eight plus, it's also microscopically sealed for water and okay. dust resistance. So water and dust resistance. And they have a new Retina HD display in each model. There's new display. Seven inch Retina display in iPhone eight and a five point five inch. IPhone 8 Plus. Okay, so they brought the, the screen size back down. The iPhone 8 will have a 4.7 inch display while the iPhone 8 Plus 5.5. We built in our 3D touch technology 
into the display. And for the first time, in an iPhone display, it is our True Tone technology. Now, True Tone, it adapts the color. Touch oh, by the way, based on how it looks, the, the, the front button, well, not button, but the front button display, the front button with the haptic feedback is still there. So they did not remove that button whatsoever. And as far as I see, the bezels are still big and ugly. Inside iPhone 8 and 8 Plus is a brand new chip. And this is a breakthrough performance in a mobile device. Honestly, it just looks like a 6 over again. Or the 7, of course. This is the most powerful and smartest chip ever in a Okay, smart, most powerful and smartest chip ever in a in a smartphone 64 bit design which is awesome 4.3 billion transistors which is a lot and a 6 core chip which is finally something that they hadn't did before okay so a10 chip 70 percent faster they're managed by our second generation performance controller that now can use all six cores at once can deliver up to 70 percent improvement in multi-threaded workloads and they have our first ever Apple de design graphics processing. Okay, GPU. so they built their their own GPU this 30 time. Thirty percent faster than the the, the A10. The GPU is designed to accelerate 3D apps and games, especially those that use our new Metal 2 framework. And the GPU also is incredible for machine learning apps, and those kind of tasks get a big speed up if they use our our core machine learning framework too. There's more to it. The 11 Bionic includes our first a new generation image signal processor, or ISP. So you know this is used in photography. A new the image signal processor, which will give it uh, a better low light performance, I see. For sharpness and texture. And for the first time, to help reduce noise, it is hardware enabled multi band. Faster low light autofocus, improved pixel processor, and hardware multi band noise reduction. Perhaps the most beloved feature of every new generation of iPhone is the camera. Definitely, People because nothing else is good. <laughs> customers send us their photos for our shot on iPhone campaign. Like this one. This was sent from Jeremy Perez. Yeah, that's a great picture, but the thing is that outside with a lot of light, all smartphones now excel at taking pictures. 12 megapixel sensor. It's larger and faster. It provides 83% more light and that's pretty amazing 83 percent more light will definitely give it better quality and a new color filter so this adds up i wish it had a bigger sensor but uh, that's just how it is range of color and lower noise in your photos and videos iphone 8 plus has two new sensors in its dual camera the wide angle camera has an f1.8 aperture and optical image stabilization the telephoto camera it's a dual camera uh set up just like before f18 and f28 apertures by uh my my next episode which is called exposure to, for dummies will explain f stops and apertures and all those things for you guys who don't know what it is yet this is absolutely beautiful now that's not the golden gate bridge this is taken in portugal it shows the beauty of wide color gamut there's great dynamic range what will be amazing if they can take HDR on the, the this new camera now that would be innovation shows incredible wide quality color again I I have to appreciate that Apple Apple devices have always had excellent color reproduction on their cameras so the pictures that come out come with accurate colors so if you want to take pictures with any camera and you want accurate colors then you would go with the iPhone because of their accurate camera sensors Here's a great and processors. Photography. Texture, detail, and, and very subtle colors in this darker environment. Last year we introduced portrait mode. iPhone 8 takes fantastic portrait modes. And people flip over taking these photos, and now with the iPhone 8 Plus, you're going to get sharper details, more uses in low light, and even a more natural bokeh. In the back. I mean, for a photographer like me, this seeing the bokeh, camera. it's very nice quality bokeh. The only thing I would say is that based on the depth of field, how, how could somebody get that much bokeh in the back while still getting the full uh, foreground in focus? That would ha require you to have an ultra-long lens 
while having it at a low f-stop so you could compress the background while also getting the the foreground um image in this case uh, it was a girl in a hat completely um in focus Using the new dual cameras and the A11 Bionic chip, the iPhone 8 Plus, the team has come up with a new feature called Portrait Lighting. And this is beta, but it will ship with the iPhone 8 Plus. And here's how it works. You compose a photo in the camera app using the portrait mode. The dual cameras in the ISP sense the scene. They create a depth map. They separate the subject from the background. And you see machine learning, it creates facial landmarks and actually changes the lighting of the contours over your face. That happens while you're composing the shot. This seems interesting, but it's in beta, as they said, and it looks like a gimmick to me, because so honestly... Right when you're in the camera app, you use portrait mode, and there's a new menu to select the lighting effect you want to use. You just swipe to pick a different effect. Basically, uh, what it's doing is almost like a, uh, you editing in uh, one of the, the suites, like Adobe Suite or whatever, and then creating different effects based on light. So increasing contrast in the shadows, raising highlights, things like that, but virtual. And I don't really like the, the effect of it. But people who are just going to make an interesting picture on their phone will definitely enjoy this kind of effect. This is portrait mode using portrait lighting. It's actually using the setting in portrait lighting for stage light, so it drops away the background to make this stunning dramatic photograph. Beautiful. This so picture in general is actually pretty good, but they also have a nice looking model as well, so. As well. In fact, iPhone 8 has the highest quality video capture ever in a Okay, smartphone. highest quality video capture ever in a smartphone. I have to admit their 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 quality is top notch. Alright, new video encoder built by themselves and also I see in the slide faster frame rates in video and real-time image and motion analysis, whatever that means. We'll have to see how they implement it. Grass, sky, water, or movement in it. So let's say you're shooting 4K 60 frame of video, it look like this. It's beautifully optimized. The quality. Okay. So apparently, I don't know if this is in the older iPhone because I hadn't checked it. As far as I knew, they could only do 4K 30, but apparently they're doing 4K 60 in this new update, as well as 1080p at 240 frames per second. So that's going to be amazing, especially if the refresh rate is, is high enough, then you'll be able to see a very smooth and e excellent high speed, um, high speed videography. Because you can slow that down 10 times in a 24 uh, frames per second timeline and have a 10 times slow motion, which is really awesome. And our teams have worked together, hardware and software, to make iPhone like, the first camera, the first iPhone really created for augmented reality and the first smartphone. Okay. So apparently this phone is created for augmented reality and our, uh, VR. Cameras are actually individually calibrated in the factory and that makes a huge difference in the performance for AR. Okay, cameras are calibrated for AR in the factory. Low light and 60 frames per second. What else do they say on the slide? And AR greatly benefits from the new A11 Bionic chip. Okay, now they are, they are talking about the, the new chip, the A11. Apple GPU renders immersive graphics at up to 60 frames a second. The new ISP does real-time lighting estimation. This stuff is amazing that it happens on a device in the palm of our hands. So I want to show you some of the work that developers are starting to do with AR apps on iPhone 8. But here's one example. It's a game, Warhammer 40K Freeblade from Pixel Toys. They now use their photo mode to bring the Freeblade Knight into the real world and play it right where your friends are standing around you. Here's another from Major League Baseball's advanced media team. They're enhancing the at bat app with AR kit so that when you're at the game, you can hold up your iPhone and see real-time player information and stats on top of the game you're watching. That's pretty cool. 
So if you had a if you had a, a game like baseball, you can see the player apps. I mean the player um, statistics and things like that. As you're looking at it around you, this isn't some generic sky. This is the sky around you. So they they apparently they can show you constellations and things uh, with AR from the cameras straight in real time. Exciting AR app right here live on stage playing on an iPhone 8. It's from Directed Games. This is a new startup based in Shanghai. It's founded by developers who have worked on some of the biggest franchises in the world. Okay, I can, uh, from from the red phone to this phone to um, uh, the other phone that I heard recently, AR seems to be the newest big screen bezel-less display. So next year, look look towards the, the AR augmented reality as the new it thing for most phones. Competitive multiplayer games designed to be played entirely in augmented reality. This is the machines. In the game, players battle their friends in real time, either online or around the table in the same room. My friend and co-founder Andrea is preparing a match for us where we play the Rebels against the Dominators. What's really cool is with AR Kit, the Metal 2 on the new iPhone, we are able to experience games in an entirely new way. Since players are able to view the game from any angle, our content has to be incredibly detailed. With the power of the new iPhone, and Unreal support for Metal 2, we are able to render the entire level on screen, an amazing 1.2 million polygons, while also allowing you to move in close to really appreciate the high visual fidelity. And just look at those 4K effects, it's gorgeous. What they should come out now, with is a new VR headset in order to optimize it for that kind of gaming. Because if they want to implement augmented reality, well, it's also cool to implement it with virtual reality. So they could use a headset and then play these games with their iPhone very close to the to the um, surface, which in this case is a big uh, black desk. Controlling the game, you're in the game. Another awesome addition to the experience. Or table, rather. If you go close to the action, the sound increases. And if a solid object gets between you and the action, the sound is occluded perfectly. And with the stereo speakers on the new iPhone, this is truly amazing. Oh yes, because they are using the same technology from last generation where they basically use the top the, the handset um, speaker as well as the regular speaker at the bottom of the phone and then create a stereo experience made for widescreen or 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which I'll also do an episode on for the, the implementation of cinema scope over time. And I'll d- discuss that in another episode. What you just saw is an amazing evolution in how games are played and experienced thanks to the combination of AR Kit and Metal 2 on the brand new iPhone. We can't wait for you to play it. Look for the machines on the App Store this month exclusively on iOS. At this point, I would call this almost a gimmick. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it's still gimmicky. It's nothing that every user of the iPhone would think about it as a feature. But it's cool for anybody who wants um, AR. That's becoming more true than ever before with iPhone 8. It supports LTE Advanced for fast networking connections. LTE Advanced? 5.0 for the latest accessories. Of course it supports our great... Bluetooth 5.0, so they're just behind the Samsung Galaxy S8 uh, for 5.0. Beat Studio 3s as well. And now with iPhone 8, with its glass back, we're enabling the freedom of wireless, wireless charging. Finally, finally. This is something that these uh, the, the, um, LG and Samsung and most of the other phone brands that are popular have been doing for quite some time. So because of the glass back, they're able to implement wireless charging flawlessly, hopefully. And words can't describe just how much nicer it is to just put it down and pick it up. Whatever it really you is. Without ever having to plug in a cable again. You're going to want to do this by your bedside, 
don't want to do this. And I, I guess on the next iPhone iteration, they'll just remove the, the lightning port as well. So all the, the things will be transferred wirelessly. And if they can implement that well, you know, that'll be amazing. But that, it's all about latency and speed. Wirelessly connect and start using CarPlay. Put your iPhone on the center console and it's charging all without ever having to plug in a cable again. What makes this possible is we're building to iPhone 8 and 8 Plus wireless charging with Qi. The Qi is the leading openness wireless charging standard. And we hope to help Qi by increasing adoption of it and creating new use cases for it. Okay. So apparently they're not make they did not make their own wireless charging technology, but they just implemented the open source uh, key charging, or or Qi rather Q I. Many companies are offering Qi chargers, and those that are Qi certified should all work with iPhone 8. And we've worked with some developers who are creating Qi chargers, and we're going to offer them in our stores and online for our iPhone 8 customers, like this one. Mophie, let's be honest, I already knew that. From Belkin. <clears throat> so that's iPhone 8. It's a new generation of iPhone. It improves on everything we love about iPhone. It is packed with innovative technologies from the glass and aluminum design to the Retina HD displays, the new A11 Bionic chip. It's, they're designed for AR apps like no phone has been before. They have new single and dual cameras that support for the brand new photo lighting effects in portrait mode and wireless charging. Now iPhone 7 came in these three configurations starting at 32 gigabytes. We're really happy to tell you iPhone 8 is gonna start with twice the capacity at 64 gigabytes. Okay, the iPhone 8 starts at 64 gigs of capacity and then the next step up will be $699. I knew it. iPhone 8 Plus will have the same two configurations 64 gigabytes 64 gigs uh, in the basic package and then 256 for the premium package or the full um, out specs. So $700 for the iPhone 8, which is $50 more than the regular street price. And then $900, $800, I believe. $799, $800 for the, the 8 Plus. Which is not as bad as we thought. Unless the iPhone X is a total different situation. IPhone 8, a new generation of iPhone I wish they would just put two cameras on both. But they decided to use one camera on the 8 and then the dual cameras on the 8 Plus. We do have one more thing. Everybody's happy for this one more thing. I guess iPhone uh, X... We have great respect for these words, and we don't use them lightly. Our teams have been hard at work for years on something that is important to all of us. The future of the smartphone. Okay, the future of the smartphone. Apparently, their next device will solve this problem. And change the world in the process. Now, 10 years later, it is only fitting that we are here in this place on this day to reveal a product that will set the path for technology for the next decade. So apparently they've been working on something so revolutionary that it's gonna set the next step for smartphones for the next 10 years. That's a big statement. Can they really hold up to that statement? Maybe, maybe not. And of course, they've always, they always have, uh, you know, awesome, uh, okay, so the mock-up is exactly like what we saw. The back, the vertical, the vertical cameras with the flash in between, and as well as the full bezel-less display up, the full de bezel-less display, as well as that little um, camera bump at the top. So literally the mock-up that we saw in places like Unbox Therapy and different tech this channels and the CNET was completely it's accurate. Leap forward since the original iPhone. And to tell you all about it, I'd like to invite Phil back up. Phil? Thank you, sir. 
So let's see what's implemented in this and this high technology. <laughs> I hate that they are making it sound like they are the first ones to come up with it again. It's like they don't care about any other person who's also in their own uh, ecosystem as as far as I, I mean smartphones. The band is made from a surgical grade stainless steel that's both durable and polishes to a beautiful finish. And look how the glass and the stainless steel fit form a continuous surface from front to back. Except it doesn't. I can see the slight gap in between. Even though that's kind of nitpicky, but still. Resistant at a microscopic level. Comes in two beautiful finishes. Okay, same same exact thing right now as iPhone 8. They're repeating over again. To the color in the glass iPhone 10 has an all new display. It's called iPhone 10. What? Display. You mean iPhone X? The level of quality and responsiveness and efficiency is really quite a breakthrough in mobile display. Okay, so I'm assuming that they're going to make it sound like this is an, a, a note type situation. It's got Finally, they have a really high resolution, 2436 by 1125. That's a pretty good resolution. 458 pixels per inch. Now, this is the highest resolution in pixel density ever in an iPhone. I mean, it's remarkable how this larger display can be packed into a phone that fits so comfortably in our hands. The Super Retina display uses OLED technology. It looks like it uses a 2 to 1 aspect ratio or 18 by 9, whatever you want to call it. Kind of like the LG and some other phones. Apparently, this next phone will have OLED display in it, which is amazing because it's been too long. At least compared to our retina displays. But the Super Retina display overcomes all of these deficiencies. It's been too long since they have not had OLED technology, which has great brightness, very nice resolution, and it's super thin. It creates its own light, so there's no backlight bleed. There's a lot of things that are awesome. It has an incredible, a million to one... Okay, so basically what I was saying that the iPhone 8 should have, this has. HDR display, Dolby Vision and HDR10, 1 million to 1 contrast, which is of course, you know, a, a, a generic design uh, concept by every company individually. point of it that matters. And the point of it is to enable an entirely new experience. It's more fluid, more in all reality, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't feel like HDR is important on a smartphone because of the size of the screen. But, I mean, comparatively to even OLED, but they're going to improve on OLED technology to make it more accurate colors, wider color gamut, gamut, gamut my bad, and a few other things. So that should be interesting. They'll probably be the best looking displays for a while. Because what Apple has always got down is great color. They've always had great color on all their devices. How iPhone should work and how we can make it better. So now, if you want to go to the home screen, you simply swipe up from the bottom and you go home. It's that simple. It's that easy. It's incredibly smooth. And once you do it... So now they basically implemented the same exact kind of uh, display technology that Android uses, where you just swipe up to get open your screen instead of that double-click button nonsense that they normally had. But they're making it sound like it's so amazing, that intuitive. The gesture also works for multitasking. So if you're in an app and you want to multitask... You just swipe up the bottom, you pause for a split second, and you're in multitasking. And then you can tap on any app and jump right to it. Okay. You can also use the home button for Siri. So how are we going to do that now? Well, of course... You just press down on the Siri phone, probably. Before ...and say, hey, Siri. No, I didn't. Set anyone's phones off. Or you can now press the side button in, which has been made larger. Once you press it in, you can just talk to Siri. I know what you're thinking about. What about unlocking? Now they're going to use stupid iris scanning or retina display, which is not... a very important part of the iPhone user experience from the very beginning. Yeah, Touch ID. The first iPhone, we led the way with multi-touch. We created slide to unlock. 
this protected the iPhone from turning on when you didn't want it to, like in your pocket. Starting with iPhone 5S, he invented Touch ID. Made it fast and easy to protect all your data and unlock your phone with just so with fingerprint, your which is something that can't be fooled that well much. Consumer device biometric protection. But we know we can do something that's better. The iPhone 10, your iPhone is locked until you look at it and it recognizes you. Nothing has ever been simpler, more natural, and effortless. We call this Face, face ID. ID, which is what. This is a less important, basically this is a very foolish version of what face protection is for every other smartphone. Unlike Samsung's with their iris, uh, iris um, identification, which is much more accurate. It's hard to fool an iris, but it's fairly easy to fool a face. Unless it has dual, dis dual, dual cameras. Okay. And it is made up of incredible state-of-the-art technology. There's an infrared camera, a flood illuminator, the front side camera, and a dot projector. And that's not all. There's also the proximity sensor, the ambient light sensor, the speaker microphone, all packed into this true depth camera system area. It is amazing. And here's how it works. Every time you glance at your iPhone 10, it detects your face with the flood illuminator, even in the dark. The IR camera takes an IR image. The dot projector projects on over 30,000 invisible IR dots. We use the IR image and the dot pattern and we push them through neural networks to create a mathematical model of your face. And then we check that mathematical model. So basically now they're just collecting even more information. Now they have your fingerprint and then now they're going to have a perfect computer graphic imaging system of your entire face using extremely high high um depth uh, uh biometric or uh, face sensing technology multiple neural networks to create face id and to process the machine learning in face id's neural networks we built apple's first ever neural engine yeah, this is a big deal. In our pockets, in our phones, is an A11 bionic chip with a built-in neural engine to process face recognition. Okay, so they built apparently a neural engine to do biometric neural things engine. for your phone in, in the, the smartphone itself. Even though I guarantee some of it will be uploaded to their own servers because if you lose your phone, how would you have that information maintained? The neural engine is 600 billion operations per second that's pretty pretty incredible dual core design and then real-time processing per second and it's used to the real-time processing of face id recognition but for all of us it's just super easy and fun to use when you set up face id you just follow the on-screen instructions it tells you how to move your head around what happens if you lose or gain weight rapidly or that's it. You do that or things you like that what if you get a nose job what happens then your face fingerprints don't change because of that kind of thing you decide to put on glasses you're wearing a hat so you do it up any way you do it face id learns your face it learns who you are and it adapts to you as your face changes over time. Let's say you start to grow a beard. It works at day, it works at night. And the teams work hard to make sure the face ID can easily be spoofed by things like photographs. They've even gone and worked with professional mask makers and makeup artists in Hollywood to protect against these attempts to beat face ID. These are actual masks used by the engineering team to train the neural networks to protect against them in face ID. It's incredible. The team's worked hard to protect your face data. Yes. But yeah, apparently they went to Hollywood and then got these face mask uh, uh, experts to create masks and then try to see if it would um, be able to pass the security and apparently it did not potentially or allegedly rather eyes are closed you're looking away it's not going to unlock now how do we compare that to touch id how secure is it 
Well, there's no perfect system, not even biometric ones, but as we said earlier, Touch ID is the gold standard for consumer device biometric protection. And the data for Touch ID has been one in 50,000, meaning that the chance that a random person could use their fingerprint to unlock your iPhone has been about one in 50,000, and it's been great. So what are the similar statistics for Face ID? One in a million. Apparently, Touch ID could be fooled by one in 50,000 in terms of the, 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 the um, statistic. But Face ID is one in one million. It's about one in a million. And of course, the statistics are lower if that person shares a close genetic relationship. Exactly. So, for example, if you happen to have an evil twin, you really need to protect your passcode or your sensitive data with a passcode. Hopefully you don't. Face ID also works with Apple Pay. So to pay for things, you just double tap the button on the side, you look at iPhone 10 to authenticate, and hold it near the payment terminal to pay. It's that easy, fast, intuitive. So with Apple Pay now, do you use your face to, to recognize, to, to sign it on, on your phone for your account? Like Mint, 1Password, E-Trade will all work with Face ID. So Face ID, it's face, uh, face authentication from... Face authentication uses true depth sensitive. cameras, easy enrollment, specialized yeah. neural yeah. network, system. natural and secure, yeah. user privacy, yeah. attention yeah. awareness, yeah. adapts yeah. over time and works yeah. with yeah. Apple Pay yeah. and apps yeah. that use um, so Touch ID already for authentication. It works with Apple Pay, it works with third-party apps. This true depth camera system is incredible technology, and it's going to enable so many great new user experiences. The first one, of course, is Face ID. But the team decided to create another great experience with it as well. Our, apparently, they created um, something else. To do with emojis. And we use emojis to communicate with others and to express emotion. But, of course, you can't customize emojis. Okay, apparently, they're going to have some customizable emojis because of that face mapping technology. So they, they now they created an emoji, which is animated emojis, which are meant to use your personal face or design. Like for example, facial muscle movements. They've been meticulously animated to create amazing expressiveness. Just watch this can't you? The Apparently, the, anim the, the emojis can use your face to basically create emotions for their own things. You said a little late. Where are you? You can pick from a dozen different animated emojis to share and express whatever you want to express to your family and friends. And uh, yeah, apparently you can use a bunch of different emojis and you could talk. You can talk into it and then it basically uses 50, 50 different emotional uh, cues on your face and maps them to the emoji. It's interesting, but honestly, it's not really that important. I mean, it'll probably be cool to use, though. This is a phone we've been dreaming about for a long time, but... Actually, I've been dreaming of a phone that has no bezels whatsoever. Not, Let's take a look. But at least we're getting closer. I don't think next year is going to be the, the bezel this year. I think this year was the bezel this year. Next year is going to be uh, cameras and augmented reality and things like that. Let's try that again. Let's uh, go to backup here get right in so here we are and you see this expansive display it's just a beautiful canvas for all of your content and your gestures and I'm just gonna go into the weather app here and you can just see how apps look when they take advantage of the edge-to-edge -edge display now exiting an app couldn't be easier I would not call this an edge-to-edge -edge display yeah, because I still see some uh, quite a bit of bezel compared to other edge-to-edge -edge displays let's take a look at the web it just looks unbelievable edge to edge on this display and your photos of course are just gorgeous as well let's jump into this one just amazing
Now, video, of course, is unbelievable on the Super Retina display. It looks great in portrait and in landscape. Of course, this is HDR video. Just incredible looking. And Phil told you a little bit about multitasking on the device. Something so it's awesome that this phone display, the, the oh, iPhone X, does have HDR. Swipe up and stop. I have to appreciate that because as far as I know, there's not much phones, if any, that have an HDR display. And we have a great shortcut as well. You can actually move back between apps just by swiping along the bottom like this. Really easy. And it's HDR OLED and also better colors, more accurate colors using a, a wider co color gamut. Swipe down and get a control center from anywhere. It's that easy. Now let's take a look again at Face ID because unlocking your phone is just amazingly intuitive. You just raise it, look at it, and swipe right up to get started. <laughs> Uh, to be completely honest though, this is the same kind of stuff I use on my LG phone, but it's not, it probably would not be as, uh, how do you say, not accurate, it might not be as foolproof. But as far as I know, nobody else that I've known, even relatives of mine that look like me have ever got into it, and that's normal, normal run-of-the-mill camera seeing a picture face detection, so side button i'm authenticated and i can get in just like that i feel like they did this just to remove the touch id but they could have just put it in the back where the little apple logo is that's what i thought would be the smartest plus that's in the middle of the phone so it's not going to be as ridiculous as the samsung s8 cam um s8 fingerprint which is right next to the camera so i can smudge up my camera every time i can't find the fingerprint sensor you see it builds a mesh in my face and now i can just select a mask The tracking is just unreal. Check out this one. Now look at the detail over the eyes, the incredible metallic reflections, the quality of the tracking, it's, it's just stunning. Apparently they're showing the Snapchat filters of their cameras and apparently because it has the uses the AR or the the um the two cameras the, 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 the sorry the face detection cameras basically it allows them to map your face much more accurately. And just pick that up and use it as a sticker, drop it on my message like that. We also let you manipulate these in full screen. You can audition your favorites. There's some really great ones, like the kitty cat, so expressive and ferocious. It's a happy puppy. Check out the physics in the ears. The pig. <laughs> We've got a chicken. And the unicorn, mythical creature, favorite of the startup. And Yes. If you were by chance wondering what humanity would do when given access to the most advanced facial tracking technology available, you now have your answer. <laughs> now, these can be so much fun, you're going to want to share them. Unfortunately, we let you record messages. I'm going to record a message here for Tim. Hey, uh, Tim, I'm not sure what the protocol is here, but I'd like to call dibs on the fox for my favorite emoji. Uh, which one do you like? Hey, uh, Tim, I'm not sure what the protocol is here, but I'd like to call dibs on the fox for my favorite emoji. Uh, which one do you like? Now, you can send it with just, just a tap, and it appears as a looping video right inside the transcript. If we're really lucky for our grand finale. We might just get a response back from Tim. Oh, here it is. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Take me to your leader. Wait a minute, Craig. I am your leader. Let's wrap this thing up. <laughs> so that 
is your first look at the new iPhone 10 and the amazing... Okay, so it seems to me that the iPhone 8 is total trash. The iPhone 8 Plus is total trash. And the iPhone X is what we're all going to want. Thank you, Craig. Now let's talk about the amazing cameras in iPhone 10. All right. IPhone They're talking about the cameras in iPhone 10. 12, 12 megapixel sensor. All right. So 1.8, f1.8 and f2.4 aperture. So barely a quarter of a stop better on the second camera. Aperture on the wide angle camera and a faster f2.4 aperture on the telephoto. So that lets in 36. I wish they would just do 1.8 on the telephoto and just call it a day. That would be awesome. The big news on the camera, the iPhone 10, is that it has dual optical image stabilization. Okay, dual optical image st stabilization on both the lenses. That's much better. Space, but it helps with compensating for handshake and to take better photos and videos in low light. There's also a better quad LED two-tone flash that is twice the uniformity of light on our subjects. So let's look at some photos taken from the backside camera on iPhone 10. Absolutely beautiful. Great dynamic range, detail, low noise. This is a beautiful photo. The textures are simply stunning. That's a really a nice color. Lag, and it helps to freeze motion so we can get a photo like this. Look at that blue sky with low noise. It's absolutely to die for. The OIS delivers low light performance, so now you can get incredible low light images like this with the telephoto camera as well as the wide angle iPhone 10 is fantastic. The portrait mode feature that we all love. In iPhone 10, you get great portrait modes, especially in lower light. And iPhone 10 supports the brand new portrait lighting feature as well. That's again a photo taken right off of iPhone 10, not retouched in any way with the stage light. I have to say that the 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 lighting thing does look nice. I could potentially take real professional photos with it, but still, once again, dynamic range and, and things like that might be nice because of the HDR on phones, but they're not good in lower light. It's going to take a while before they actually match real sensors that are huge. But it's amazing what they're doing with these sensors that they have, which are so small compared to um, full-frame sensors or uh, even one-inch or, or one-two-thirds uh, sensors. For taking selfie photographs. And now with iPhone 10 and its true depth camera, it really delivers a breakthrough in the photos you can take for selfies. Because now with selfies, you can take portrait mode photos as well. And it also supports portrait lighting all through the front side true depth camera. I mean, people are going to be blown away with the selfies you can take with the iPhone 10. This is absolutely beautiful. And of course, everything we've seen is powered in iPhone 10 by the amazing new A11 Bionic chip. We talked all about an iPhone 8, but it's worth hitting on the highlights again because there has never been anything like it. A 64-bit, six-core design, 4.3 billion transistors, two high-performance cores, four high-efficiency cores, our new second-generation performance controller that uses all six cores at once, our first Apple design graphics processing unit, the brand new ISP that improves autofocus, the video encoder that does real-time motion analysis while you're shooting video, the neural engine, and of course, the secure enclave to protect our Face ID data. All this performance, I'm sure as you expect, does come with a hit to battery life. So All I right, so apparently... That we've increased it. Okay, so uh, apparently the, the iPhone X lasts two more hours than the iPhone 7. I have noticed that iPhones do not have very good battery life compared to the rest of the competitors. But they weren't so bad that you could say, okay, four hours and then it dies. It has chi charging. Okay, it also has chi charging, which makes sense. If it didn't, that would be a step back. It also works with third party chi devices that are chi certified. There are a lot of great devices that are going to start to come to market, particularly because of iPhone 8 and iPhone 10. I wish they would have. We also think we can make the wireless charging experience. For any of you who have seen the, the DxO um, One, which is a small camera that's only for iPhones, I wish they would have a dongle that name, or not a dongle, I wish they would have an adapter 
that will, could just do it. Kind of like Moto Mods in their Moto 360 mod where they just plug it in and they have a 360 camera. That would be interesting. You plug in your chargers. You take those cables and chargers with you on the road when you travel. We think we have hop up an idea of how to make this a better experience. And here it is. Okay. So apparently they have they have uh, uh, revolutionized the, the 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 wireless charging by having a mat that can charge two devices at once, their Apple and their their Apple um, iPhone and their uh, watch, and as well as the AirPods. That's so amazing, revolutionary. It's not like I haven't seen this already. This makes no sense, to be honest. They could have just got a regular one. They already have mats that do this. They have tables that do this. They intelligently work together and communicate with each other to manage the charging through one more efficient charging system. This is not possible with current standards, but our team knows how to do this. We call it air power. They call it air power. We hope people love it. That encourages others to create more advanced solutions. Based they could have called it I charge or air charge, but you know, that's you know, if you, if you do use that though, Apple, you know, I need some royalties, but anyways, next year. So that is iPhone 10, is the future of the smartphone. I'm right, he does say iPhone 10. Innovative features. So yeah, this is iPhone 10. So I guess they skipped 9. I guess they're just copying Microsoft now, <laughs> going from Windows 8 to Windows 10. Like a hipster. For more than a decade, our intention has been to create an iPhone that is all display. A physical object that disappears into the experience. This is iPhone 10. Developing the form and display together defines a whole new integration, making a boundary between the device and the screen hard to discern. The custom OLED panel was engineered to fold and seamlessly combine with the external surfaces. Mechanical buttons give way to touch and gestures. There's no home button. A single swipe takes you to the home screen. A more responsive touch system means the gestures in iOS 11 are more fluid. The polished stainless steel band reinforces the water-resistant all-glass design. This new glass formulation, the most durable ever in a smartphone, enables, for the first time, wireless charging. Our new true depth camera system, contained within this tiny space, uses extraordinary depth sensing technology to let you unlock your phone with a glance. We call this Face ID. It maps the unique geometry of your face with over 30,000 invisible dots. Invisible dots, that, invisible dots that may or may not change over the time that I, uh, you know, eat at McDonald's or or go to the gym. So interesting. Because all these people aren't doing things like gaining weight or losing weight, which can change the overall look of your face. Nobody knows that. I mean, nobody notices that. Sure, you can you can just omit the entire hair, and then their face will be the same. But if they gain weight on their cheeks, or gain weight on their chin, or or lose weight, do a nose job, uh, have their their eyebrows raised uh, or lowered, or things like that, have their eyebrows done. What happens then? Smarter by the A11 Bionic chip. 
With machine learning, the camera detects elements in the scene to optimize the image before the photo is even taken. The camera we use every day now delivers so much more. And as iOS becomes the world's largest platform for augmented reality, it will redefine what's possible. So they already know right now that everybody there is going to buy an iPhone. So they know they're immediately going to be the number one makers in augmented reality. Even though they're not the only phones that have it and have not have it, have had it for quite some time now. T works hard to make iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 in the most environmentally friendly manner possible. They have arsenic free display glass. Mercury-free display, BFR, PVC free, beryllium free, low carbon process and highly recyclable. And they're highly recyclable with their materials. I'm really proud of that list, so I like to say it every time. iPhone 10 also comes in two configurations. 64 gigs and 256 gigs. Oh, I see it. It's not iPhone X, my bad. X means 10, so it's iPhone 10. Everybody said it's iPhone X, but how did they know the specific name? But whatever. iPhone 10. So they changed it to Roman numerals because, you know, they're Apple. But this year is really special. It starts with iPhone SE, iPhone 6S, iPhone 7. The new generation iPhone 8. Okay, the iPhone SE is 30, 349, iPhone 6S is 449, 549 for the 7, 699 for the 8, and then 999 for the 10, 10 to start ago, at 64 gigs. The and then for 256, let's assume it's between 11 to $1,200. It said, I escaped to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. He said that's what Apple does, he skates where the puck is going to be. And that is what iPhone 10 is all about. Thank you. Now to you, Tim. All right, my response to this is that, honestly, there's a lot of amazing things they did. Face ID, they have increased the quality of Face ID, and also I have to congratulate them for the HDR display and 240 frames per second at 1080p. But all in all, this phone is not revolutionary. The screen is not the most perfect screen ever. The bevel, the, the, the bezels, I mean, are not like bezel-less, as they want to call it. And this is probably not the fastest, strongest, most best phone ever. But it's a big improvement versus the 7. Oh, but not the 8. The 8 is pure trash still. But the, the 10 is amazing. So if you go from the 7 or you have the 7 now, to upgrade to the 10 is probably a great choice. But if you're going to go from the 7 to the 8, it's not worth it in my personal opinion. It has some new features that are amazing. 240 frames per second at 1080p as I said before, but and the contour lighting and the different kinds of studio lighting, monochrome lighting, all that stuff looks awesome for uh, like photographers who want to do only iPhone photography like on Instagram or for people who are just trying to get better pictures overall. But as far as I look at it, it's not really what I would say is something that's going to revolutionize the market for 10 years, more like for six months before Samsung or LG comes out with something new. Powerful AR capabilities. And uh, you have to look out for those Chinese brands because there's already a phone right now that has full bezel-less display, which beats almost every mainstream phone. So the, these, Chinese, these Chinese manufacturers are coming up with some amazing technology, and they have reasonable prices. So let's see what they come up with as well. And we began this morning with some inspiring words from Steve. One of the ways that I believe people express their appreciation to the rest of humanity is to make something wonderful and put it out there. We work really hard at Apple to create wonderful things. And we hope you love what we've introduced today. I think Steve would be really proud of them. 
I'd like to thank everyone at Apple who made today possible. Uh, I'd like everybody at Apple to stand up that are here representing their teams from hardware and software and services. Please stand up and operations. Our amazing retail employees. And everyone that works so hard on this theater and on Apple Park. One of the great things about this theater is an unbelievable hands-on area. Uh, it is the most beautiful hands-on area we've ever had by far. And I would encourage all of you to join us there and get your hands on these wonderful products. Thank you so much for spending the morning with us. Thank you. Well, that was it. Um, overall, I think that they have done some good things to upgrade or, uh, or implement better technology in their own devices, but comparatively speaking it seems like apple is continuing to be completely what do you call it um superior they feel superior so they don't look at any other technology apparently but it seems like they the technology they're using now is already implemented in other phones and they just decided to use them in one device and because of that they assume that this is such a amazing thing that they're that's the word i was looking for they th th throughout this whole this this time it seems like everything they said was very condescending not looking at one of the biggest players in the game which is samsung and saying that like they their devices are the best out of all of them but if you've used the 835 uh, snapdragon you'd realize that the a10x or the a11 is really nothing compared to it but once again apple will be apple and people will still buy whatever they want to buy so that's it, and thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode. I'll be coming out a new episode on Thursday, and that'll be the Exposure for Dummies episode, and then I'll see you see you next one. So thanks for watching. If you like it, co comment, subscribe, and you know, write in the comments about what you like or dislike about this Apple event. All right, thank you.